Hi, today I'll be talking about the EQ8 and how to do automation. In my last video on using the beat repeat audio effect, at some point in that video I showed that I had an EQ8 on one of the tracks which had some uh, MIDI macros assigned to it. But because I wanted to focus on the beat repeat, I didn't really explain what was going on, so I'll explain in this video. And I'll be using the chords that we created in the previous video with the beat repeat. So let's quickly uh, listen to them. Next I'll grab an EQ8 from the audio effects, drop it on the first track and I'm also going to add a limiter to avoid clipping. Here we go, add a limiter to it. Looking at the EQ8, you'll notice that there's four filters enabled um, and that's what we'll be working with, so we only need four of them. Now let's listen to the track again and see what happens when I move one of these around. Now if you look at all four filters, you'll notice that they all have the same mode applied. So the first one has the middle second one, third one, fourth one as well. So and that's the first one I want to change. So the first one I want it to be a low cut filter. Number four I want it to be a high cut filter. Two and three will remain in the middle and we'll leave them using the bell filter mode. Now if you highlight the uh, uh, EQ8 you'll see there's a blue hand here appearing, which means uh, the filters can now be controlled by MIDI controller. And let me see, this is the first knob, the third knob should control number two. Just have to look for the right knobs. So, as you, uh, as you can see, they're moving. And the thing is that each filter uh, is now controlled by a separate knob and what I want to do is control uh, several filters at the same time just using one knob. And I want to move filter 1 and 4 together and filter 2 and 3. So to get started I'm going to disable 2 and 3 just for now so it is clear what I'm doing. So 1 and 4, I'm going to put them up here. And next we'll go into the MIDI mappings. Highlight the select the first filter and click on frequency. And now I'm gonna turn a knob on my MIDI keyboard. So it has appeared over here. Now I'm gonna click on number four. Again click on the frequency and now I'm gonna uh, turn the same knob. And as you can see, both filter frequencies are now assigned to the same knob. So if I exit MIDI mapping and turn that knob, both frequencies should now move. As you can see, they move together, which is not really what we're after. So let's go ahead and separate them again. Put four over here somewhere, and three over here. Go back to the MIDI mapping look at the first one, that's the frequency for the first one. The minimum is set to uh, 30 Hz. Select it and notice it's at 89 Hz. So we're going to set the minimum to 89. Like that. Now select number 4, look at the frequency, it's at 7K somewhere. So let's fill in 7K. Like that. Next, I'm going to move both somewhere in the middle.
somewhere around there. So select the first one. Now it's at about 600 hertz. So let's fill in 600 here. Select number four. And this one is at, uh, let's make it 1K. Like that. Now right click on the frequency for number four and invert the range. Now exit MIDI mapping. Turn the knob again. And as you can see, they now both move together. Next thing I'd like to do is assign uh, the MIDI mapping to make the frequencies go up and down, or rather have the Q go up and down, both at the same time. So go back into MIDI mappings, select number one, select the Q, and then turn the knob on the keyboard. Select number four, select the Q, turn the knob on the keyboard. So both are assigned now to the same knob on my MIDI keyboard. So exit MIDI mapping, turn the knob to see if it actually works, and there we go. Now we can also assign like a minimum value, which could be somewhere around here, yeah, 0 0.3. So go back into MIDI mapping. Instead of 0 0.10, make it 0 0.3, 0 0.3, there we go exit again and there we have it so that's all we need to do for the 1 and 4 but before we move on to frequency 2 and 3 let's listen to what we have so far <laughs> Also note that uh, to get a slightly different effect, if you go back to the MIDI mappings, remember that we inverted the range of the uh, number 4 frequency. If I undo that again, so this is how it was. Now exit MIDI mapping. If I now turn the first knob, rather than moving in the same direction together, they now move inwards and outwards. So let's listen to that for a second. So by just inverting the, the frequency on the number four, you can get a, a different effect. Okay, let's move on to frequency 2 and 3. So I'm going to disable 1 and 4. Enable 2 and 3. Put them slightly closer together. Almost like next to each other. Like that. Select number 2. What I want to do here is uh, change the gain. So make it go up and down. I don't want to change the frequency, I don't want to change the Q, only up and down. So once again, put them slightly together, go into uh, MIDI mappings again, select number two, select the gain, then twist the knob, select number three, select the gain, turn that same knob, and exit MIDI mapping. Test it out, they both go up and down. Now enable 1 and 4 again, and we now have 4 frequencies that we can control with 3 knobs. So close, far apart, up, down, and then make 2 and 3 go up and down. So if we now add these clips to arrangement view okay let's grab this as well 
like that. Let me just make them a little shorter for this video. Okay, like that. So if you now um, arm track and if we hit play, we can now start recording the automation. <laughs> that a bit and let's add each automation to a separate lane so we can see what it is we did so we now have all the automation on separate lanes so the frequency for the one and the four the resonance for one and four and then the gain for the two and the three to round this video up let's just listen to it one more time uh, hope you've enjoyed it and thanks for watching.